alive. Um, something happened. Anyway, this is Lauren Steiner. Uh, welcome to tonight's edition of the Robust Opposition. This is going to be a really good show for you. Um, on Monday, 14 employees at Whole Foods stores in California, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Washington sued Whole Foods in a class action suit a uh, class action lawsuit for retaliating against them for wearing Black Lives Matter masks and encouraging others to as well. One of the employees, Savannah Kinzer, who was fired from the Whole Foods job from, I'm sorry, from her, uh, from the Whole Foods store in Cambridge, Massachusetts, joins me here today to tell us all about it. Welcome to the robust opposition, Savannah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So um, tell us first a little bit about your background. Were you a political activist before this? Um, how did this whole get the, how did this whole thing get started? Yeah, um, so I studied environmental studies in college. I just graduated in December from Northeastern University and I was involved in a lot of climate activism. Um, so part of the divest movement, I did a lot of work in renewable energy while I was in college as well. Um, but um, after I graduated, I got a job at a restaurant um, to make some quick money and then I was laid off due to COVID. Uh, and so because I'm able-bodied and I thought that I should be doing something during this time also just to pay rent, I saw that Whole Foods was hiring and I, um, I got a job there in April. Um, and then I write the whole racial pandemic hit and it was really hard and painful for a lot of people. Um, I'm white, clearly. Um, so uh, I felt the need to do something um, as a white ally. Um, and I have a lot of black coworkers at Whole Foods. Um, and so I saw in the paper um, that Lila Stiles and Kayla Green were told that they wore Black Lives Matter masks at another Whole Foods in Bedford, New Hampshire. And they were told to take them off or leave without pay. So that's what inspired me to get involved and order 35 masks and then dole them out to my coworkers. So um, what happened, trying to change this screen here, it's a little bit glitzy. Um, Okay, so <laughs> yeah, this thing is not working. So what happened when you started handing out the mask? What was the first thing that happened? Yeah, so we, um, I handed out 35 and then one of my coworkers said, you're going to need a lot more. Uh, we have 250 people that work at Whole Foods. So I went next door and this uh, little old woman that is a tailor next door sewed me 50 black masks. And then my friend Kirby, um, she helped me paint them. She made stencils and so we hand painted 50 more. Um, we handed them out. Um, we didn't get to hand out all of them by the first day of the action, but the first day of the action was June 24th. And we all agreed at 2 p.m. to put them on uh, at the same time. So there were about 13 of us. And there were about six or seven that were sent home. And then seven of us left. And we were called into the office of our manager. And he told us that we were violating dress code. But we were like, that doesn't make sense because you have openly supported Black Lives Matter on your website. Um, your website says we support the black community and meaningful world change. Um, really in big, a big header. It says racism has no place here. They also donated $10 million to the Black Lives Matter movement and 12 affiliated campaigns or 11 affiliated um, campaigns and so, um, or organizations. And then they also are willing to match employee donations. Um, so we believe that they've made the Black Lives Matter movement industry affiliated. And it says in our handbook that we can wear brands that are industry affiliated. So that was our, that was our initial argument. And they were like, no, you're still violating dress code. And we were like, but you've never 
called us out on our dress code before. Um, we wear Red Sox masks, we wear Bruins masks, we've worn ripped jeans, um, uh, we wear gay pride pins. They've never said anything about dress code to us before, um, unless it's, you know, our shorts are too short or something. Um, and I even wore a mask for a week before the action that said, soup is good. Um, I wore this guy. Um, and um, they didn't say anything. So, so we were in his office and he said, I, you're still violating dress code. And he said, what? He's like, you can take it off or you can leave. And so we all left. We walked out, seven of us. And um, the next day, 13 of us walked out. And the wow. next day, 20 of us walked out. And then the news got a hold of it. The Boston Globe broke the story initially. And then a bunch just news just started flooding my inbox um, for interviews. And we started organizing across the country. Uh, Seattle, we got in touch with Seattle. We got in touch with um, uh, New Hampshire, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, California, um, all these different states where workers had been told to take off their masks or leave without pay. And so we just started to communicate. And over time, we, we garnered a lot of support from the community. The community has been outside our store every single day um, since we started. And, and it's just the support has just grown since. Now, tell me about the support that you got from uh, politicians. I understand that uh, Ayanna Presley supports you guys. Yeah, so we, uh, one of the first weeks, there's our city council member, uh, Mark McGovern, he helped, um, and our mayor, a mayor of Cambridge, they were out protesting in front of our store for quite some time. And so were uh, state representatives. And they all drafted, the city of Cambridge drafted a, um, an ordinance demanding that we be able to wear the masks. The city of Cambridge also wrote a letter to the um, president, the regional president, demanding that we be able to wear the masks. Um, there was no response. We did get the regional president to come down and talk to us. Again, no response um, after he left, after hearing all of our arguments. Um, but then we got uh, Elizabeth Warren to support us. She made a Facebook post about what we were doing and um, posted uh, an article about it and she tweeted about us. And then um, the other day I, I saw that uh, Senator Markey, Ed Markey was at a ice cream shop giving out ice cream at Gracie's in Somerville. So I went over there and I just introduced myself and I said what we were doing and he was like, hmm, you know, Whole Foods should, should actually do what they you know, purport to preach on their website, you know, about Whole Foods. And I was like, shouldn't they? Shouldn't they though? Like, and he laughed. And, and then a couple hours later, before we filed our press, released our press release, you know, um, we, we got word that he provided a statement. It was crazy. Um, and so did Ayanna Presley, just out of no, like, they just, they both provided statements and we put them in the press release. And then the next day, it was released, and um, and we filed the court case, and and yeah, it was it was crazy. It was really fortunate. Well, um, you missed the part about how they fired you. When they fired okay. you, what did they tell you? Because they're alleging that it had nothing to do with your activism. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I was late a couple of times to work. Um, so we have a point system. And when you get, I believe it's like eight or not, when you get nine points, you get a written or a verbal warning. And then when you get four points after that, you get a final warning um, or a written and then a final. And then, and then four after that is grounds for termination. So I took time off for uh, Fourth of July weekend and they knew I was going to be gone. And there was one day that I forgot to call out or get someone to cover for me. And that morning that I forgot to call out, I called out at 11. My shift started at 6, and it was a couple hours too late. I think I was supposed to call the day before or whatever. But I called, and I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I forgot to get someone to cover for me. And they're like, that's okay. It's fine. And so I was like, okay. Um, 
And then the next week I go and they call me in the office. And because of all of the points that I racked up and this no call, no show is what they called it. Um, they escalated me straight to a final. And so that final put me on grounds for termination after accumulating four more points after that. And so I was very diligent. I, that day they, I was wearing the mask and they're like, are you going to continue to wear the mask? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to continue to wear the mask. <laughs> like I'm, I'm going to wear it today. And so I was stubborn and I shouldn't have probably worn it that day, but I, I did. So then I had three points left. And, um, so that I was very, del I did not wear my mask because I realized that it's better for me to stay within the company to organize and like, you know, support my coworkers than if I just fired and then make a hullabaloo about it. And then, that's it. So I was really diligent. Um, and there was one day that my bike tire was flat and I, it was 6am and I scheduled a lift and I didn't know that lift drivers are collecting unemployment. So it took forever to get to work. And I called and they were like, Oh, it's okay. You know, you're, it's okay. You're, uh, you're good. And I was like, okay. So I got to work late that day. Um, and that happened, I think one other time, but Saturday when I was fired, I woke up in the morning to go get my bike and my back bike tire was stolen. So I called and I said, I'm going to be three minutes past the grace period. And they're like, it's okay. I won't give you a point. My team leader said that. And then the lift came, saw my bike and ditched me. So I'd get another lift. So I was half an hour late. She's like, we have to give you a point. And I'm like, well, thank God I have two more points to get. And she goes, nah, dude, this is your fourth point. And I was like, what? Like, no way no way. And she showed me and I had two points and I was like, but they said that that was okay. And then I realized like, oh, but they still give you a point. Even if they say it's okay, like they still give you a point. They don't tell you. So it was my bad. Like they didn't tell me that I got points those days, even though I was so close to being fired, you know, but I guess it's on me to know that I got points those days for being late. I just, I'm new too. So I don't really I should have been more diligent, right? I should well, have been more actually, diligent. I wouldn't say that. You know, I think you're blaming yourself when it was clear they were setting you up. I mean, that's what human relations departments are in existence for, is to make sure they cover the ass of their employer uh, when they fire people. So I think, you know, you should not feel bad. And I think probably at this point, you would probably say, I mean, I don't want to put words into your mouth, that what you're doing is really worth it because like most people who do nonviolent civil disobedience, not that you're breaking a government law, you're breaking more of a corporate rule, supposedly, but when people do nonviolent civil disobedience, it's on behalf of a larger good. Yeah, and, and ultimately, right, they're saying that I was fired because of these days that I was late and my no call, no show, whatever, but I accumulated nine points for wearing that mask. Mm. And so if I had not worn that mask, I would still be working there. So yeah. it's really not about me being late by any means. And also the days that I were, I was late were, were like emergencies. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I don't, I mean, I think the whole point system is, yeah, it's a cop out and they, they definitely, I was fired for wearing right. that mask. At the now, end of the day, that's, that's why so, I so, so you filed this lawsuit. It came out in all the papers. It's in the New York Times, in the Boston Globe. Have you gotten more additional support since these articles came out? Has there been more response from the company except to say that that's not why you were fired? I mean, are they still being stubborn about this? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, they, they say that it's, that I had days to, every single time I had the opportunity to comply and I'm like, but <laughs> doesn't that defeat the purpose? <laughs> like, yeah, I could have complied and take off, taken off my mask, but that does, that defeats the purpose. Like well, the whole point to wearing this mask is to follow your policy of community values. Like that is part of your policy handbook is we support the community. We put the community first, our customers first, our customers, are all different types of people, right? Like, they, yeah, we do have a very white customer base, yeah. but we also have black customers and we have customers of all different cultures and backgrounds and ages and ethnicities and genders and sexualities. And like, those are who we want to support, right? That's, that's what we, that's, that's what Whole Foods is. That's a Whole Foods I signed up to work right. for. Right. And, 
And so the fact that they're, this is where they draw the line, like this is the hill they want to die on, speaks volumes. And it really is disappointing. At the end of the day, it's insulting that my black coworker can't put on a mask that says his life matters. Like, I don't, how insulting, you know, and demeaning and demoralizing. It's really upsetting and embarrassing, quite frankly. And I, I hope that they change their policy because I don't want to live in, I don't, I don't want to live in a world in which we all are afraid to speak out and celebrate other cultures and identities and stuff just because maybe it's contentious or uncomfortable for some. Like that's, that's, that's kind of what we're facing here right now. I think politically too is like a lot of cancel culture and a lot of being afraid to like face the reality of all different perspectives and, and all different ways to look at things. People are just afraid. And I, I think Whole Foods is afraid. Um, well, and they need not be. Can you talk about how in contrast, uh, Starbucks handled this exact same situation? Yeah, that's, that's why, that's how I got everyone to wear the mask. Cause I was like, Hey, Starbucks, they, they totally banned the Black Lives Matter apparel and masks. And then there was super big backlash and then they reversed it. And now they've, they've given every single one of their employees a t-shirt that says Black Lives Matter across the country. And I mean, they now sell Black Lives Matter apparel and Whole Foods could have easily done that. And in fact, like on the, one of my first days wearing the mask, a customer was like, do you sell those masks? And I was like, no, but we will. Because uh, yeah. I thought they were going to change their policy, right? And uh, it would have been so easy. It, like none of this would have ever had to happen. But I think that Whole Foods feels, you know, if they, they give an inch, they got to give a mile, you know? And I don't know. So... Now, as an organizer, are you keeping track of um, where uh, other stores are supporting you? In other words, um, are you, um, like, do you know how many, because you said you got emails out to all these other stores. How many stores are continuing to wear these masks to support this cause? I hope more stores begin to wear the mask, right? It's, it's hard because you're going against your management, but you're also going against your coworkers who want to wear the mask, but can't. They can't afford to wear the mask because of retaliation. They need their job. They need the money. Yeah. They can't walk out because they can't afford to go without pay for that day. Yeah. And that's the whole point. It's like people shouldn't be pitted between their mor supporting their morals and values and supporting their family. Like those should never be in conflict with each other. And so we've created a GoFundMe to, um, and we, we're currently at $12,000 to reimburse people for the time in which they walk out. Cause it's super easy. You'll just put on the mask very peacefully, continue your job, that's it. And then they, the, the, I mean, it depends on your store's culture, right? And your management, like some management is super retaliatory and aggressive. Um, I don't know what your management would be like, but ours just took us into their office and they politely said, please take off your mask or, or we will have to ask you to leave because you're violating dress code. And we would say, okay, we're going to clock out and leave. And so you clock out and you leave. It's very simple, but, um, we encourage you to do that. Whoever is watching this, if you're a Whole Foods employee, please do it. And if they do, you can add your name to our case and you could be a plaintiff. And the more voices that are speaking out against this, the more plaintiffs that we add to this case, the larger the case and, um, you know, the stronger it is. Um, and and I, think it's, I think it's important. And I also think it's important that, you know, like I'm trying to keep track of everyone that's putting on masks and stuff, but I hope that I'll, I lose track, you know, because I want everyone to put on these masks. It doesn't even have to be a Whole Foods worker. Like you can be from whatever grocery store or you can be a, just a customer. It doesn't matter. But these masks, I think they, you can't underestimate them, you know? Okay, so now you um, have, uh, gosh, this thing is making me crazy. I'm trying to, um, I'm sorry. Um, so now you have, um, 
time to wait while this lawsuit is winding its way through the courts. What is your next step? You mentioned you have a GoFundMe. Are you going to try to organize rallies outside of Whole Foods stores where you get customers yeah. to sign uh, petitions to the store to change this policy? Is that gonna be one of your next steps? Yeah, so we do have a petition on change.org. It's the freedom for all Whole Foods employees to explicitly support black lives. That's the petition. And, and you'll be putting it in the comments. You can put it in the comments of this show. Great. Yeah, yeah, totally. And our GoFundMe. Um, but uh, yeah, I we have a rally every Saturday. It was every day, but since the lawsuit broke, we think that it's better to organize and then have like one big one every Saturday. Um, and so it's going to be outside River Street. It's from five thirty to six thirty. And then we finally got Fresh Pond Whole Foods um, to, to join us. So I think theirs is on Sunday. Um, and that, that, was, um, that was a good rally last Saturday outside their store because we didn't know how many of their workers, their, work, their store is really big. And so their management is not happy about what they're doing because that's it's like a big pocketbook for, uh, for regional. You know, it's a big hit, big dent. So um, they're pretty retaliatory, I think, against their workers. Their workers are a little more scared, but it was so cool. Um, I showed up and I was expecting maybe one or two and there were like seven people that walked out and there was a huge pet band and there were people with signs and this guy, um, uh, he makes, he paints murals and I'll show you. This is a mural of Severno. And Suvierno is a um, one of our uh, plaintiffs, and he's an employee. But this guy paints murals of, I mean, a it's lot beautiful. of like Brianna. That's Su that's Suv. Um, but he paints them of Brianna Taylor, um, of George Floyd, Ahmed Aubrey, Elijah McDade. It's like all, it, yeah. So there are a bunch of these portraits. Um, and now, yeah, the community's really shown up. Are you asking for people to boycott Whole Foods until they change this policy? Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, I already boycott Whole Foods anyway. I've been doing so since Jeff Bezos bought them because I don't like yeah. the way he treats his workers. As you know, I've had the Whole Foods workers, uh, the whole worker on my um, show two years ago. I had the Chris Smalls and the other fellow who uh, organized protesting the way the unsafe conditions in the Amazon warehouses. He was also fired. So, I mean, I think Amazon is a terrible company and um, I try to boycott them as much as I can. I uh, mean, but, yeah. I just, I think there's potential, right, for Whole Foods to. I mean, as an environmental studies major, like a company with a corporation with that much power, like I think that they have the ability to help our food systems and our agricultural systems and reorient themselves back to their original morals and values, which were community oriented. And I think that they have they have a lot of, of power to help build a sustainable future that we all want. We just need to remind them and show them what they're capable of, I think. Yeah. Um, but again yeah i know it's it's yeah it's hard but um i was gonna say one more thing about uh protesters and the community um skip my mind sorry <laughs> well in our pre-interview you told me that this changed you forever can you tell the viewers how so yeah um Based on the kind, yeah, of back, feel, you know, the kind of background that you came from? Yeah, I mean, I'm very, I'm right, I'm, I'm very fortunate. And I, I'm white, right? I have white privilege, but I'm also, I come from a wealthy background. And I'm very privileged. And, you know, I don't have much weighing me down. I don't have student debt. And like, I think it takes people to realize, and, it, and I didn't realize, I, I was pretty lost when I graduated. 
And it wasn't until I just got down with the people at Whole Foods that I was super found. <laughs> and I found this and like, this is the fight. Like this is my, this is how, I've always been so concerned about the future. And I'm so not anymore. I'm so hopeful because I've met such amazing people throughout this process. And I know that my peers are all going to do such incredible things to build this, this sustainable future that we all envision. Um, one that's equitable, right? And democratized. And we can't afford not to, I guess. Yeah. And so I'm more inspired than ever after going through this process. And, and yeah, I was, I was lost, but I'm, I'm super found now. And I know I can't stop <laughs> and I won't stop. <laughs> well, so, that's, um, that's how I, yeah. I always end my show. I always tell people to keep fighting and you're clearly a fighter. So we've come to the end of our time. I want to thank you so much for being on the show and for all you've done to help uh, this cause. And I just want to promote to the viewers that my next show is going to be Tuesday night with uh, climate reporter Steve Horn, who is the climate reporter for the Real News Network. And we're going to be talking about the latest uh, horrible things that Trump is doing environmentally. Uh, we're going to be talking about how the Biden climate plan is pretty much written by the fossil fuel industry. He's doing a lot of good reporting and investigating into that. We're going to be talking about what's going on in California with uh, Newsom uh, re-upping on fracking during a pandemic when he thought people wouldn't notice. And also uh, something new Steve's going to tell us about, his exploration into geoengineering. And possibly even Andrea Leon Grossman may come on uh, to talk about the Poseidon desalination plant, which is very close to getting approved which people need to stop. They need to get on to a Zoom meeting next uh, Thursday and Friday, and we'll tell you how to weigh in with public comments. Desalinization is extremely expensive and it's not environmentally sound, and there's better ways for us to uh, get our water. So uh, from Savannah and me, I am signing off. Uh, this has been Lauren Steiner with the Robust Opposition, and keep fighting.